Hi everyone, it's Knowing Lux. I am here to talk to you about the Oran sandal and also the Oasis, which is what I have. I have them displayed behind me. I'll talk about each one and why I picked these colors. They're probably gonna seem very similar to you, but they are in fact different colors. And I'll talk to you about the comfort, whether I think it's worth it, and what specifically to look for before you buy them because there is a small nuance to them that I think makes a huge difference for comfort and technically for the quality uh, with which it is made. So let me get into that. Specifically, I want to start with, I guess, the Oasis since I only have one pair of that. That is the, I have it in like this, oh gosh, I'm sorry, I don't have like the names. Not that it matters because they change so much off and on. And um, this is like a metallic bronze or even a little bit of a rosy bronze. It is a few years old at least. Um, you know, I wear this a lot for when I wanna take something on vacation that is comfortable, but also has a little bit of, you know, an evening look to it because of this, you know, the shininess of the of the leather. And the little bit of heel helps me feel a little bit more elegant and also look better when I wear skirts. But I don't like a heel bigger than this for when I travel because it's not practical. We like to walk after dinner or before dinner and you're often, you know, taking things in as you're sightseeing and sometimes going from one thing to another. So this is the kind of heel height that I think works really well for just doing whatever you need to do on whatever outing you have to go to. The other thing I want to mention, which I think is the most important when you're looking at either the Oran or the um, the Oasis, is for the footbed. So I think it's easiest to see actually on this one because there's a seam here on the end and then there is no other seam on the footbed. Sometimes you will see sandals have a seam right here. And the problem with that is that the seam over time begins to actually hurt your the balls of your feet. And I know that this is a really small thing, but I don't baby my shoes. I like to just wear them. Sometimes I go anywhere in them. And if after the end of the night, this starts to kind of rub up against your ball of your foot, that can be a real problem. And I have seen some, very few, but some Orans and Oasises with the Oasis is Oasis. Oh, 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 I don't know. Um, with the actual seam right here, and so I mean, ultimately, it is a cheaper way for them to make the shoe if they make it that way, because they don't have to use a full piece of leather along the entire bed of the foot. But I think definitely look out for it because I, it's a really important comfort feature. And other than that, I find these shoes to be very comfortable, with the caveat that. I wouldn't go sightseeing in them. I wouldn't go shopping in them if I'm really on an air, like a, on a mission, right? Like if you're just running to a store or just know what you need to get in and out, if you're spending within a mile or less of steps, I think you're fine, you know, because sometimes even in this kind of a shoe, I don't want to walk that much because they're, you know, they're a little nice, they're expensive. I don't want to, I want to have them for a very long time. That's gonna bring me to my next point, which is about preservation of these shoes. I do spray them with the Cadillac leather spray that actually protects the leather from damage. And it has held up very well on these. Now, they look really new. And I think that is because I hardly um, get any wear on them because of the spray that I'm using. And the other thing that I do, these ones are a little bit dirtier because I wear them more, is I get the sole protected with the rubber and I just get this done at a local shoe repair place. Now I wish I would get, I would have gotten the bottom done. I actually might take this back and get the bottoms done as well. They charge a little bit more for that, but I think the longevity is, is helped with that. And so like I did it with this one. This one I haven't even, I think I wore them out once. You can't even see the wear. I just got these. These are, they they make a white very often, but I have not seen a white with the brown gold stitching on it. And I really wanted that. I didn't want a plain white because I feel like when the color of the stitching starts to discolor, like any white shoe will, because the leather and the 
thread will discolor separately. I think it looks tacky when it's like yellow and white or yellow and off-white and it just stands out in a weird way. This I think is a more obvious way of standing out and then it matches this as well, which is kind of like a foot, a wood bottom. So take a look and see also this doesn't have that seam. So it's gonna stay very comfortable. I did spray this one, especially because it's white. And I will do that like every six months or so, maybe after like a 10th wear or something like that, if I remember. Um, but it does really, really help. And then I did do the rubber sole on the bottom of the heel as well, because that gets just as worn. And so it's kind of, you know, just to extra protect. I'm not planning on selling these or anything, so I don't care that it doesn't actually, um, I don't care that it, it might do something for the long term of this shoe. I plan to wear it down um, forever and ever until it's something I have to practically throw away. Uh, but the good thing is that the shoe repair people can do a lot. I've seen them repair people's seams here when they've gotten overused and then this starts to come out. But I just, I mean, these other two that I have, I have worn so much um, and you, you can't even tell. Like the leather does tend to crease, you will see that. But I think that that's a charm to a leather shoe. I think that's a nice thing to do actually, like to wear in your leather and know that it's the kind of quality product that you can have forever and ever. I also know that the shoe repair person that I have spoken to and work with, he has done magic to leather things. I'm actually gonna take a bag that I have that's from the 70s from my mother-in-law that is completely damaged around the edges and he said he's gonna try to actually just take that leather off I'll do a video on that actually and replace the leather. It's for a Gucci bag that's all, the top has was drawstring. And so she used it and used it and pulled it and all the leather is shredded, but the rest of the bag is in great condition. The canvas is hardly used. The base has like hardly any marks or um, any wear on the corners. And so I love using it. It's a nice big bag. And so this getting to know your shoe repair person is so useful. There's actually three in my town that I tend to use, uh, one in particular that I like more. And so that's just a really nice person to know and use. I've also used him to stretch shoes when um, a pair of my leather shoes kind of shrank in the rain when they got stuck in the rain. So that's another reason why um, you can use their services. But uh, yeah, I do recommend the Oran and the Oasis if you are looking for a shoe that is just for quick things, dinners, sort of dressier occasions. I don't think they're comfortable enough, even though they're flat, to go more than like a mile, not a straight mile, because I think you'd get tired in them, but you know, if whatever you're gonna go out and do is not gonna give you more than like three to 4,000 steps, I think you're fine. Um, but anything more than that is gonna start to just ache because it's a flat shoe. There's no arch support, there's no cushion. Um, it really is about the strength of your foot in them. But I think they look really good on everybody's foot I've ever seen them on. I know some people think they don't look good on your feet. I don't have any photos of me in them, but there's plenty of stuff online for you to check out. I just think they do look really, really good. Let me know if you have questions about them. I am a size 40. My foot is wider in the front than it is in the back. Um, but they, my foot is not a traditional wide, but it does tend to fit into regular shoes but I feel it when they're narrow. So just something that I would share as well to help with kind of knowing where I'm at. As the size 40 that I wear in French sizes, it's really weird because in Hermes, I'm a 40, but in Chanel, I'm 40 and a half, in Dior, I'm 41. So it makes really no sense to me why they're so different. It also probably depends on the shoe itself. Like in Gucci, I'm even smaller. So that is something to consider as well. I usually wear like Nike's a size nine and a half, um, Adidas eight and a half. So that might give you an idea of whether or not these are gonna fit you at a size 40. I think that sizing is so tough, but I will say that the customer service at Hermes has always been really, really lovely. Even when I wasn't able to go into a store and I had to order through the sales associate and have it shipped, like they let me know what the shipping return policy is and I had no trouble. I've never had to do it, thankfully. I've been able to go in and know my size, but if I had, um, the guy was just like really, really nice about it. So I recommend them. I think they're cute. I don't see them around as much as I thought I would. Uh, I think on the luxury circuit, they tend to be considered kind of basic, but I think they're really cute and just forever shoes. So there you go. Thanks for listening and watching. Please subscribe. I look forward to doing more of these videos.